Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you guys about this x Aegis bipod, okay? So we're talking about the bipod today. I did mention it uh, briefly in another video on this Ruger MPR, uh, but today I wanted to do a uh, dedicated video on it. Uh, it's a $40 bipod on Amazon. It's an M-Lock, so, so this attaches uh, to the M-Lock rail, okay? So you can see how it attaches to the side. Um, in the I, prior to this, I did have another bipod that attached to the bottom, so I had to put a Picatinny rail right. I had a three-slot Picatinny rail, and then the bipod attached to that. It made it stick out a lot more. Um, I mean, I could I would I would basically mount the bipod when I wanted to shoot it off the bipod, but then when I wanted to store it, uh, just because it stuck out so much, it was a little cumbersome. The thing that I like about this uh, X Aegis is once I fold it up, right. So the, and, and the way it goes is the legs collapse in like this, and then it'll rotate up like that. Do the same thing over here on this side. Bring the leg in, collapse it up. Okay. So as you can see, it sits on the side of the rifle, right, attached to the M lock over there. So um, it's light enough that I can keep on there. I can store it in a safe like this. Um, if I'm shooting this standing. The gun is light enough, so in one power I can come up and I can comfortably shoot this without too much extra weight being in the front over here, right? Now, obviously, it does add weight. Uh, the bipod, the, the two, the second one, these two pieces, right? This is what they look like. So I, I got, I obviously, I got a second set, so you can tell I must like it a lot. Um, these two pieces together weigh about nine ounces, okay? So they're aluminum. Uh, so, so this is pretty light, and that, that's primarily what I was looking for, because my mentality is that, um, here's the thing, on a rifle like this, right, which is a dedicated, let me call, right, rifle like this, which is a dedicated distance shooter, because I got a 1 to 8 scope on here, so most of the time when I'm shooting this, it's at distance, um, and it makes sense, this is an 18 inch cold hammer forged barrel, it makes sense for me to put a distance scope on this, uh, so I gotta have a good scope on it, right? Um, you know, and once you add the scope, right, I gotta have a sling on it, right? So, because you gotta have a sling, because a lot of times I'm walking into the woods, you know, with a, with an almost a nine and a half inch, a nine, nine pound rifle. This, this rifle, as you see, it weighs nine pounds, four ounces, right? With those bipods on it. You gotta have a sling on it so you can carry it into the woods, carry other things in your hands. And then from this position, I'm able to whip it around and come up, right? Normally I keep this in the one power. Right, and then only when I want to shoot distance, I'll switch it to eight power and I'll bring it back down to one power. Okay, so as I was saying, if you're gonna go cheap on something, you go cheap on the uh, on the bipod. Okay, because if the bipod breaks, uh, you can still use the rifle, you can still do the things that you want to do. Now, as far as shooting this rifle, right, let me bring this up, let's deploy this again. So, this deploys down. So another reason why I wanted to go cheap on this, or, or rather I didn't want to invest too much money on this, um, is because like most of the time if we're shooting, right, if we're shooting on the table like this, okay, no matter what type of bipod you're using, it's it's gonna wanna slide. Okay, so 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 doesn't matter how good your bipod is, um, it, it's gonna slide on you. And when you're shooting off of a bipod, I kind of see that as the weakest link, okay? Um, this bipod works best when you're on the ground or you're on a rough surface, okay? Now, uh, one of the things to be aware of, if you're gonna, if you're gonna keep these legs deployed like this and drop to the, go to the ground, you're, you're gonna break them, right? They hit something, right? It doesn't, it's not gonna take much force to break these legs, okay? Now, I think to understand what the, uh, with the M locks, right? The M lock system by itself, right? This rail system uh, is not terribly strong. So, it, even if let's say you get a much um, more heavy duty bipod that attaches to the to the M locks, if you hit the ground, right? If you fall to the ground and this hits, uh, the weakest link here will be the M lock. So, so basically, the um, it, it's going to basically, you know, somehow or other, these these rails are going to bend and. Uh, that's where it's gonna break. So if anything is gonna break, I would rather the bipod break rather than my rails get bent out of place. Okay, so that's, that's the other thing I was thinking with with this particular design. Um, 
Now, if I'm uh, if I'm shooting this, let's say in a prone position on the ground, right? Uh, first of all, let me mention this. I like using twenty round. That's a twenty round magazine. Usually, when I'm shooting this rifle, I'm using a twenty round magazine because it, here you can see it doesn't hit the table. Um, and uh, you know, if I'm on the ground, sometimes there might be a rock there, or you know, I don't know what kind of gr what kind of surface I'm going to be on. Um, so I'd rather have these shorter twenty round magazines. But what I'm going to do is. Uh, let me bring up this trim over here, just because I'm looking for something that's going to give me a little friction, okay? So, if I am, uh, if I'm on the ground, right, what I'm looking to do, move this forward a little bit, I will usually flip these legs forward a little bit, right? I'm going to, because there's a couple of positions, I'm going to switch this to the 45 position, and you, and you can see with the, with the, with the 20 round magazine, it's, it's still not hitting the table. Uh, not that it matters if your magazine's hitting the ground or anything, but it's just more stable. You know, if I leave this over here, if, if the magazine's what's hitting is what's supporting this, it tends to be a little bit less stable. It'll want to fall over. Um, whereas this, because the grip is further back, that tends to be a little bit more stable. So another reason why I like using 20 round magazines. So anyway, um, if I'm going to be shooting this, what I, what I want to do is I want to load what we call load up on the bipod. So with the legs forward like that, you know, I'll place them, you know, I'll find the rock or a log or a log or something that's going to, with a, where the legs are going to catch into, right? And I can, and I basically I'm going to push forward a little bit. So by pushing forward a little bit uh, into those legs, I'm, I'm able to stabilize the gun a little bit more, okay? All right, so this is what they call loading up on the bipod. Um, so, the, so shifting the legs forward to this angle will make them a little bit stronger, right? Because now the stress is going up into the stronger area over here, right? It's going straight up rather than if it's down like this, right? Right, if it's like this, uh, then what's, what's happening is now, you know, the, the stress is on the point that, that catches and attach, that attach. Now, another option is um, you might find yourself in a position where you can also bend the legs, the legs back a little bit so in this position like this, you know, depending on what kind of ground you're on, you, know, you can you can now like pull back. I can't quite do. Here you go. You can pull, pull back on the legs, right? So by pulling back on the legs, okay. Pull, you know, so now instead of pushing forward, I'm pulling I'm pulling this into my chest. So so this is another way to stabilize the rifle, right? So you can bend them back a little bit like that. Uh, so that sometimes works. So you gotta see what kind of what kind of ground you're on. Um, so these are some nice options that you can have with this. Um, this is a good place to, you know, this is a good scope, uh, sorry, a good bipod to buy, spend $40 on, um, and then kind of experiment, see how it works for you, um, you know, and then down the road you can maybe upgrade to something more expensive if you find that this is not cut, cutting it, right, for what you're doing, okay, so... Um, you know, but but this is an area where I don't mind, you know, just using the forty dollar bipod, because if 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 this doesn't work for me, I can always just, you know, bag the gun, right? So here's the thing: most of the time, if I'm trying to get like a tight grouping, right? So I just want to know, you know, how tight of a grouping this gun can shoot at a with a typical typical type of ammunition, a typical at a, at a specific distance. I will not use the bipod, right? I, I will actually bag the gun. Uh, I'll bag the gun in the front, I'll bag the gun in the back, I'll be, and the reason is because I can get the gun a lot more stable, okay? So again, that's another reason why, you know, at the moment, I'm not, you know, I, I don't see it as a priority to invest in a more expensive bipod, uh, because most of the time, if I'm trying to shoot at distance, I, I think that no matter what bipod I have, bagging the gun is still going to produce better results versus shooting off of a bipod. The bipod is good because I can, you know, I can basically walk into the woods um, and not have to carry a bag with me. Okay? And, uh, you know, with the sling over here, you know, the nice thing is that this, the bipod, you know, when it's folded, it doesn't get in your way. I can throw this over my back. It do, It's not, like, stabbing me in the back. All right? So, so, you know, it's nice when the legs aren't stabbing you in the back. All right? And then from there, you know, I can wh whip it around, bring it up. Okay, so that, that works pretty good. Um, now, you notice the way with the legs positioned where they are, 
I will I will hold the gun like this, right? So this is my position where I hold the gun, right? If I'm going to come up, so this has like that one to eight power scope on it. So most of the time it's a distance shooter, but the nice thing about this is it has the capability to shoot close distance, right? So so if I'm going to keep carrying this gun, I'm expecting to shoot long distance uh, or medium distance, uh, but I can quickly power it down to one and also shoot close distance. So. Um, if you're gonna have a distance scope, I really like the option of having you know I, I like having it be able to go down to a one power. Now, how about a light on this? Um, normally, I will not carry a light with this setup uh, because the light adds weight, right? So this gun right here, as you see, it weighs uh, nine pounds four ounces unloaded. Okay, the legs by themselves, the two of them together are nine ounces. Um, if I, it, you know, if I was to let's say go out into the into the woods. I normally would not put a light on this gun because I would not be expecting to be shooting this at night. However, I would take a light with me, right? Uh, and the nice thing about the pistol light is that it goes on really easy, right? So you can mount it over there. Okay, I'm not gonna bother tightening it down now, but with it in that position over there, you know, I can come up and I can activate it with my thumb. So this is a really good option. You know, I can I can put this light on when I think I'm going to need it, and I don't need to ha I don't need to keep it on there because originally um, I had a um, I had a uh, um, a stream light, the 1000 lumen light, uh, you know, with the pressure pad, right? So what I found is that it made the rifle um, heavier. Uh, obviously, if I have the that type of a light mounted on the side, it's going to interfere with folding up the legs. So if you're going to have the if you're gonna have a rifle with a bipod on it, and you don't have space over here to to, to, to mount um, a light, um, a pistol light is a good option, right? And again, I wouldn't bother mounting this on the rifle because you're normally not gonna be expect to be using it. But um, it's good to have with you, and it goes on easy. You don't have to be looking for zip ties, you know. So so this system works pretty good. Um, other thing worth mentioning um, is I uh, because of the the big the scope on this right I have the ambidextrous uh, charging handle on this normally I don't uh, I just use no spec charging handles but this is you know because of the scope this is really convenient to have that ambidextrous charging handle it works really good especially if you have gloves on it and I can get to it when it's in that you know tucked up under there so so that's my setup bipod is working really good with this setup um, you know forty dollars uh, you know, uh, it, I mean, it just does the job. I mean, which is not to say at some later point I may not consider uh, upgrading, um, but right now this is this is doing a pretty good job. I have no complaints. I've been using this for about six months now. I've had lots of um, new shooters. I trained lots of shooters at, at distance shooting. They've been able to, to, to shoot this pretty good. Um, and again, they're always going to shoot better when they're bagged, right? But they, they, they shoot pretty good with this. Uh, I mean, what could possibly go wrong with this? I mean, there are some pins in there. I mean, I can see over time the pins might slide out, you know. But again, you know, the bipod, having a bipod on your rifle is not a critical component. If the bipod fails, you can still do the things that you need to do with this rifle, right? You can still improvise and, um, you know, and, 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 and hit the thing that you need to hit. So so the bipod is really a, uh, a comfort, you know, I, I see it as a comfort, so that's why when it comes to spending money on upgrades, that's probably the, you know, of all the things, that's the last thing um, that, I, that I generally give priority to. So, there are my thoughts on that. If you guys have any feedback, comments, put in the comment section. And if you're not a member, subscribe. I'll talk to you guys soon.